Hey guys, Quissy here with another Diremwall East video. Yes, I am still farming this place. I've already made two videos on this topic, so if you haven't seen the two before that, I highly recommend. The first one just goes over my Lasher farm, which is what you're looking at right now. The second one is a little bit of updates to the Lasher farm and some new things that I've incorporated into the Gold Farm run. Now, as time has gone on, I have upgraded my gear. I'm 7 out of 8 Judgment right now. I actually use 6 out of 8 Judgment for these runs because I replace my chest piece with the Demon Forged Breastplate. Now, that has a lifesteal element to it, which is really important when farming these Lashers. Um, as you can see, you're just getting constantly whacked by these Whiplashers, and with each whack you get a chance for that Demon Forge Breastplate to proc. Similar to the Skull Flame Shield, which I am still using, um, that has a chance of the Flame Strike effect, obviously, which is another added AoE. The Skull Flame Shield also has a chance for a Lifesteal effect as well. But anyway, in this video I'm going to show you how I've extended my Lasher farm to the two rooms past the Conservatory. And those two rooms are Hydro Spawn's room and Leth Tendris's room. Now the reason I've extended these runs is for a number of reasons. I picked up Herbalism on my Paladin and I've made so much more money that way. And I've noticed that there are multiple Ghost Mushroom spawns in these two rooms. So I wanted to find a way where I could get these Ghost Mushrooms. I would see them on the minimap all the time, but I didn't know how to get them. So I kind of figured out a little way that I could uh, make it work and make some more money each run. Now the second thing that I do on these runs is I open unlocked chests in Hydro Spawn and Leth Tendris's room. There are four spawn points available for these chests and I'm going to walk you through how exactly I open them because they're next to packs of demons that I cannot kill and I kind of do this fancy little move where I aggro them and kind of train them away and then I drop combat and then have a clear path to open the chest once I'm safely out of combat because you can't open a chest if you are in combat. Now when going through these runs you'll only find one chest per run. Um, there are four different spawn areas where a chest could appear but you will only find one per run. And that being said, there's also a 50-50 chance that you'll find a locked chest. So unless you're a rogue or a blacksmith, you simply can't open the locked chests. So this run, you gotta keep in mind that we're looking for unlocked chests, and that's mainly what I do when I complete these runs. I, If I see a locked chest, I just skip it. And before I get even further, I just want to mention that I use two items in these runs. One is the offhand Skull of Impending Doom, and the other is the Nifty Stopwatch. You could alternatively use Swiftness Potions if you have money to spend on them or the materials used to craft them. But just as a preface, those are the two items that I use to help open these chests. And don't forget that there are timestamps in the description below of this video, so if you want to skip ahead or focus on one aspect of this video, please feel free to do so. Alright, so once you're finished with your lasher farm or collecting your herbs or whatever you want to do in this room, you don't even have to kill the lashers if you don't want to, you could skip straight to Hydra Spawn's room by simply jumping down and running over. Now, one thing that I keep an eye out for as I approach this room, uh, keep in mind on the minimap, it's in the southeast corner of the map of the conservatory. There's a roaming demon who patrols this area in stealth. So I just kind of patrol this area um, just to try to find him because he could give you a little bit of an issue. Um, you'll probably have to run into him and kill him anyway, but I just like to kind of look around and, and see where he is. Um, sometimes a ghost mushroom spawns in this corner, so right off the bat you can get a ghost mushroom uh, pretty easily if it is spawned there. Um, also in this corner you could get a stationary stealth demon as well, so just keep an eye out for these, these stealth guys. Those guys have a chance to drop fell cloth and demonic runes and other greens and blues. I'm gonna head over to Hydra Spawn and where I'm marking the X is the first area where a chest can spawn. So actually I'm gonna put a square because next to the square guy is really where you see the chest. Uh, I'm gonna sneak past Hydra Spawn here. Make sure he's on the other side of the uh, pool when you do this, but if you run all the way to this pillar here, you'll be in a safe spot and you won't have to worry about him aggroing on you. Alright, so right next to that star, we did not see a spawn point for the chest, that's fine. Let's move on to the next area, and look at that. There's a large solid chest there, and it is unlocked. Perfect. The first thing that I do before I open the chest, just to prep, is I will actually run all the way up the hallway leading up to the second boss, 
Severum Thornhoof. Um, just to kill any additional demons that are patrolling the area, you're guaranteed to find at least this one wild spawn shadow stalker. He walks all the way up that ramp to the top. There's also a chance for ghost mushroom to spawn in that corner too, kind of where those rock formations are, so keep an eye out for that if you're an herbalist. Once that guy's dead, you're gonna wanna run all the way up the ramp. There shouldn't be any other patrols, that is the only guy who patrols the area, and sometimes there's a ghost mushroom spawn at the top of here as well. And look at that, just my luck, there's a ghost mushroom. So I'm gonna grab the ghost mushroom and get into position. So as a paladin, there are two items that I use for this. The Nifty Stopwatch, which is a 40% run speed increase for 10 seconds, but it has a 30 minute cooldown. The other item is the Skull of Impending Doom offhand. That is a 60% run speed increase, but you lose some health and mana when you use it, um, but it only has a 5 minute cooldown, so that's a lot more uh, time efficient to use if you're doing these pretty regularly. Uh, both of these items can be acquired through questing in the Badlands, so if you're level 60, you should have a pretty easy time getting these items. So I'm going to show you guys what I do. I have my two speed items equipped. Now alternatively, if you don't have these items, you could use a swiftness potion. Uh, if you're a rogue or a druid, you could use your sprint ability. Uh, anything that could just increase your movement speed pretty quickly to run away from some mobs. So I'm going to put a skull on the target of the group. And essentially what I'm going to do is aggro them and then I'm going to run all the way back up this hallway to the point where I am standing right now. Once I get to this point, I simply fall down onto this pillar here, and I wait for combat to drop so that I could open the chest. Because once again, you can't open a chest if you're in combat. So if you jump down to this little ledge here, they will drop aggro. A couple things to keep an eye out for are those warp wood pods. So there's one spawned in that camp right there. There's also one right below me. And the warp wood pods have a chance to either spawn whiplashers or a poisonous gas cloud, which will both put you in combat. So another thing you might want to do to prepare for this is step on the warpwood pods and clear those out just in case. In the case of the warpwood pod in the camp, you can't really clear that out beforehand. Just be super wary of it when you run back. You could simply just avoid the warpwood pod. Same thing with the stars camp. There's a warpwood pod kind of close to where the chest would spawn. Keep an eye out for those because those could fudge things up. So I'm going to get into position here. I have my skull on, I have my stopwatch, and I have my target marked. You don't have to mark the target, I just do that to be organized. And what you want to do is get as max range as possible. So in the case of a paladin, i um, just going to use my exorcism ability to pull them, as we have limited ranged abilities, and they are demons, so I could use exorcism on them. There we go. As soon as you pull them, you could make a run towards that door. I usually pop my bubble first and then use my skull of impending doom to get away, here's where uh, you other classes could either use uh, like a swiftness potion if you really need to, um, or the rogue sprint ability. Uh, I pop my bubble just so that I don't get dazed or interrupted or stunned or anything like that, and also the skull, like I said, removes some of your health, so it just prevents um, that, that loss of health as you're doing this. So run all the way up, get up on this ledge, I wait for the mobs to catch up to me to just give me a little bit more time, and then I fall onto the ledge right there. And I got my target in sight. The only thing I need to wait for is to get out of combat and watch out for that warpwood pod because it could put me back in combat. So combat has dropped. I'm jumping down. I'm avoiding the warpwood pod. I'm running straight to the chest and I should have a clear way. Make sure you have space in your bags, by the way, because <laughs> you want to open that chest, loot everything, and then run out as quickly as possible. So I got a green there. Uh, and then I'm running to this corner here, because uh, there's a ghost mushroom spawn. Sometimes the shadow stalkers spawn there, which is fine. You could easily kill that guy. So kill this guy, loot the ghost mushroom, and that's it for Hydro Spawn's room. Now let's move on to Leth Tendris's room. So the problem with getting to Leth Tendris's room is there are a couple of packs in the way that I as a paladin cannot solo kill. Um, if you're a stealth class, you could definitely stealth past these packs, but what I do is I use a lesser invisibility potion. So what I do is I head on back up to Zevrim's room again. And I skip past the boss. Sometimes you could do this without aggroing him, but if you do aggro him, it's no problem. So you sneak past this area. Looks like he aggroed on me. No big deal. So you jump up onto this ledge and then drop down onto the ledge below. And just stand there for a few seconds and you will drop combat. Now any class could do this obviously. Again, if you're stealth, you don't really need to worry about this. 
I wait till the combat drops so that I could pop my invisibility potion. Because you cannot pop a lesser invisibility potion or a regular invisibility potion if you're in combat. So you do have to wait till you're out of combat to do this. So, looks like the way is clear. Again, I can't kill these two packs, so this is my way of getting past these guys and gaining access to Leth Tendris's room. So, I'm gonna pop my lesser invisibility potion. Um, do keep in mind that if you take any sort of damage while you're invisible, you, the invisibility effect will clear. Um, you won't take any falling damage from dropping down from that ledge, but just, uh, just a heads up if you pop it from, like, Zevrim's room or something. Usually a ghost mushroom spawns in that corner. We don't have a spawn right there. That's fine. We're gonna move on. We're gonna head up this hallway. There's usually a stealth pat who roams around, similar to the other demons that we've encountered. There he is, so I'm just gonna kill him real quick. And once he's dead, you can freely move up the ramp and into Lethendris' room without worrying about any other mobs that you have to kill other than some roaming paths, which you could avoid. Uh, sometimes they might run into you, but you, for the most part you could run through this area freely without stealth. Uh, so I'm just showing another ghost mushroom spawn point right here. There is no ghost mushroom there, but just a heads up that it could spawn there. So this first pack here that I'm marking with star is the next area where a chest could spawn in Left Tendris' room. It's, it's spot one of two. We just checked that area and there's no chest, so we're gonna move on to the second spot, which is more towards the, the northwest corner of the room. And as I said, you could freely move through this room, just watch out for the paths. There's a few demon paths that walk around, but they could be avoided if you just keep an eye on their, uh, their path. Um, again, watch out for the warpwood pods. If you walk near a, warp, a warpwood pod, there's a chance that it could spawn whiplashers or a poisonous cloud, so just keep an eye out for that. And we're gonna run all the way back here, and there's a ghost mushroom and a grom's blood back here. Nice. Easy to get. You don't have to aggro anything in order to get these, so these guys are just open. The grom's blood, just be a little bit careful. It's closer to the pack, but you can absolutely loot it without uh, aggroing them. So the pack that I've marked as square is spot two of two, where the chest could spawn in Leth Tendris's room. Now again, the chest is not there, but I'm gonna demonstrate for you um, how to open it anyway, just in case that the chest is there. So let's pretend that there is a chest next to the square. And similar to what we did in Hydro Spawn's room, we're gonna do the same trick. We're gonna equip our Skull of Impending Doom, we're gonna equip our Nifty Stopwatch, and uh, wait for them to get off cooldown, and I'll show you guys what to do. So essentially we're gonna use the ramp that is all the way at the end of that room and leads up to where Leth Tendris is. Um, so we're gonna aggro this pack, run all the way up the ramp, and then we're gonna drop down onto, you guessed it, one of the pillars based on the proximity of where the chest is. So in this case, you're gonna wanna drop down onto this pillar right in front of us, which I will show you. So same thing, gain max distance from the mob as far away as you can. I'm gonna use my exorcism. Um, I have run speed enchant on my boots, so sometimes I don't even have to use my Skull of Impending Doom or stopwatch, but you could just to be safe. Like if it's off cooldown, you might as well use it to get the chest. So again, we're gonna run all the way down the hall and up this ramp up to Leth Tendris. You shouldn't aggro Leth Tendris, just usually just just hug the left hand side here and uh, jump up onto the ledge and you should be fine. And then simply fall down onto the pillar here. Now sometimes you'll aggro that little spawn, uh, just simply line of sight him around the pillar and you should drop aggro. And just wait for combat to drop and you'll have a clear path to open the chest. So yeah, the chest usually spawns by this bonfire here. You'll have an empty path to open the chest. Um, again, try to open it as quickly as possible because the pack will eventually return and you don't want to be in their range when they come back. So that's really it with Leth Tendris's room. I'm gonna show you, I'll show you guys the other pack as well just in case you want to see how it's done. Again, we're gonna assume there's a chest there. Uh, in this example here, there is no chest, but I'll show you guys anyway, just in case you uh, want to get a visual of how I do it. So same exact thing, you're going to utilize the ramp in Leth Tendris' room to jump up and de-aggro them. You're just going to jump down on a different pillar. So I'm going to pull the pack, I'm going to run all the way up the pillar again, make sure they're all pulled, they're all linked together, so they will. Uh, another ghost mushroom spawns there, by the way. Uh, I'm going to bubble and then jump down onto the pillar right there. Again, watch out for that wild spawn Felsworn that patrols around. He could aggro on you sometimes. Uh, you have a little bit less time to open the chest in this scenario just because you're closer to the ramp. 
but you should still have enough time. I've done this plenty of times where I have enough time to open the chest. So again, chest usually spawn somewhere over here. Um, loot it as quickly as possible and then run to a safe spot in the corner here or somewhere before the uh, pack returns. So that's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. If you do like it, give it a thumbs up. You could also subscribe to my YouTube channel to show some support. I have a link to all my socials in the description below of this video. I live stream regularly on Twitch. Be sure to check that out if you want to see some live gameplay. Let me know what other type of Paladin videos that you'd like to see. I hope this content really helped you guys out. A lot of people told me that my original Dire Mall East video helped them out greatly. It now has over 100,000 views, which is insane. I'm super happy to hear about that, guys. And if there's any other video that I could create to help you guys out as well, please let me know. Hope you guys are all doing well out there, and we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.